just as he said. So when asked to give you an overview of the gospel in the epistles, there are a number of ways that this could be done. But this is the route I am going to take us through. What is unique about the gospel preached in the epistles? Well, you know the scriptures say in Hebrews that God, who at many times in various manners spoke in past time unto the fathers by the prophets, by the prophets. Moses was told to take Joshua, a man in whom is the spirit, lay your hand on him. The spirit of God was with Joshua. The spirit of God was with the prophets. It says of, of others, the spirit of the Lord came upon them. There were judges that God placed among Israel and the spirit came upon them to judge. But the spirit seemed limited to certain individuals and the extent of the indwelling was limited. He would leave an individual after he had been with them or been upon them. The life of Saul serves as an example in 1 Samuel 10.10. 10. When they came there to a hill, there was a group of prophets to meet him. Then the Spirit of God came upon him and he prophesied among them. The Spirit came and left, but the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, the scripture says, and a distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. So before the apostles, we have a very different knowledge and experience with the Holy Spirit. The Old Testament records the Holy Spirit giving special abilities to people, such as when the Lord spoke to Moses saying, see, I have called by name Bezaliel of the tribe of Judah. He was filled with the spirit of God in wisdom in understanding in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. So we get some knowledge that the Spirit of God is there to empower. The Spirit of God is there to, to speak what God wants us to hear, what God is holding us accountable to, but also to do his work. And yet, there's a very different experience with the Holy Spirit after Christ returns to heaven. Before that, not really an indwelling. John 14, 17 says the reason why. Even the spirit of truth whom the wor world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. For he dwells with you and, Jesus says, will be in you. Christ is the one who in these last days has spoken to us. God has spoken to us by his son, and the scripture says that this is the one that gives us the spirit, his own spirit. He whom God hath sent, John 3, 34 says, speaketh the words of God, for God giveth not the spirit by measure unto him. And he leaves with us his spirit. We are not alone. We are given the comforter. Now, Jeremiah had told by the Spirit that God, in his covenant that he would make with the house of Israel after those days, he would put his law in their minds and write it on their hearts, and he would be their God, and they would be his people. Now, the covenant, the new covenant, is what is expounded and opened up to us in the epistles as those who have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit themselves. Not a spirit that visits and then leaves. Not a spirit which imparts a gift but then doesn't touch any other area of one's life. Not as a visitation, as an indwelling, one who dwells among 
people, and you can speak very differently to people who have the Holy Spirit, can't you? And the men that wrote these letters were indwelled by the Holy Spirit. They understood things after Christ ascended. They did not fully understand while he was present with them. And Jesus promised them but when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak. He will disclose to you what is to come. We have this expounded to us in the epistles. Jesus had said, when he turned to his disciples privately, blessed are the eyes that you see what you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings desired to see what you see, but did not see it. And to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. And this is what is spoken to us through the epistles. As for you, the anointing which you received from him abides in you. And you have no need for anyone to teach you, but as his anointing teaches you about all things and is true and is not a lie, and just as it is as taught to you, you abide in him. It is all unity. It is all oneness. There is a unique fellowship that we have with the Father through Jesus Christ whose gospel we preach, whose gospel we adorn. So the gospel is spoken to specific churches, to specific people, and yet also to all the church and all the people. The power of God is declared in the epistles. The knowledge that God has cleaned you out, he has cleansed you so that he can fill you you're taught of him. And now, because you have the Holy Spirit in you, you are also part of the body of Christ. You are there also building one another up, fortifying one another, fellowshipping one another, holding fast to the affections of the Holy Spirit, the doctrine of Christ, and giving no place to the devil. Isn't that a wonderful liberty? We do not have to give any place to the devil. So this is why. This is why in Romans, the apostle can say, reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus because of the indwelling of his Holy Spirit. It's why in Corinthians, he can say, but we have the mind of Christ. It's why in Galatians, we can stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. It's why in Ephesians, we're told, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. It's why in Philippians, the apostle says, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. In Colossians, as you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. Thessalonians, rejoice always. I don't think that was a law under the, <laughs> under Moses, not quite, huh? Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks. Do not quench the spirit. In Timothy, we take these words to heart, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life. Well, you've been given a down payment. You've been given the seal. He's indwelling you. The Holy Spirit is indwelling you. In Titus, we're told, adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. All things. All things you can adorn the doctrine of God. In Philemon, he appeals to Philemon for love's sake. That's a work of the Holy Spirit. This is the true living God transforming us, abiding in us. Hebrews, it is by the Holy Spirit, these men that walked with the Lord, that the, the truth was opened up to them, and they were given to see that Christ came as high priest of the good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands. 
that is not of this creation. Because of the Holy Spirit's opening up to us, James says, so speak and so do as those who will be judged by the law of liberty. That's the, ju- that's the law we're going to be judged by, the law of liberty. Peter, by the Spirit, says, if anyone speaks, anyone, anyone, not just the pastor, not just the person up front, if anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. And if anyone ministers, anyone, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies. You could not do that without the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. John says that the anointing which you have received from God abides in you. And Jude says this, to those who are called, sanctified by God the Father, and preserved in Christ Jesus. That is us. We would not know these things if not for the gospel presented to us in the epistles by men who received the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, who received understanding, and who were put in the body in specific ways, particular ways, in order to open these truths up to us. And it still is opening up to us, isn't it? It is still fresh and new because this is not just about life. God isn't giving you a life. God isn't just giving you a lifestyle. He is giving us life. He has given us life. Jesus is life. And he abides in us. So I leave you with this as our overview. 2 Timothy 1.14, hold fast the pattern of sound words which you have heard in these epistles, in faith and love which are in Christ Jesus, that good thing which was committed to you, keep by the Holy Spirit.